Welcome to the National Healthcare Safety Network NHSN Quick Learn Series. This program will provide you with definitions and rules for identifying infections. This presentation focuses on identifying healthcare associated infections found in Chapter 2 of the NHSN Patient Safety Manual. Please visit the NHSN website to view the full chapter. The following topics are covered in this program Infection Window Period, or IWP. Date of event, or DOE. Present on admission, or POA infections. Healthcare associated infections, or HAI. Repeat infection time frame, or RIT. Secondary bloodstream infection, or BSI attribution period, and pathogen assignment. Please note that these definitions and rules are not for use when conducting ventilator-associated event and lab ID event surveillance. With the exception of DOE, the definitions and rules also do not apply to surgical site infection surveillance. The NHSN IWP is defined as the seven days during which all site-specific infection criteria must be met. The IWP includes the date of the first positive diagnostic test that is used as an element of the site-specific criterion, three calendar days before the diagnostic test, and three calendar days after. For site-specific infection definitions that do not include a diagnostic test, the date of the first documented localized sign and or symptom included as part of the infection criterion is used to create the IWP. For the purposes of defining the IWP, the following are considered diagnostic tests. Laboratory specimen collection, imaging test, and procedure or exam. When a diagnostic test is not part of the site-specific criterion, the localized sign and or symptom examples include, but are not limited to, diarrhea, site-specific pain, and purulent exudate. The DOE is the date the first element used to meet the site-specific infection criterion occurs for the first time within the seven-day IWP. While it is possible for the date of the diagnostic test and the DOE to be the same, it is not always the case. When more than one criterion of a site-specific infection definition is met, identify the IWP that results in the earliest date of event. This provides a better chance that the patient's infection will be accurately identified as present on admission or not associated with the use of a medical device. For more information, please refer to examples beginning on page 2-4 of the Identifying Healthcare Associated Infections chapter of the Patient Safety Component Manual. Accurate determination of the DOE is critical because DOE is day one of the RIT and is used to determine POA versus HAI, device association, and location of attribution. Let's look at an example to further explain the concepts of the IWP and the DOE. A urine culture collected on hospital day 13 is found to have E. coli growing in a quantity greater than or equal to 100,000 colony forming units per milliliter. A urine culture is a diagnostic test that's included as part of the urinary tract site specific criterion. It sets the seven day IWP, which includes the diagnostic test date, three days before, and three days after. All other elements of the infection criterion must occur during the IWP for the site-specific infection criterion to be met. In this example, a fever is first documented on hospital day 11 within the IWP. The symptomatic urinary tract infection, or SUDI, definition is met. Hospital day 11 is the SUDI DOE the date the first element, fever, used to meet the site-specific infection criterion occurs for the first time within the seven-day IWP. The DOE determines whether an infection is POA or HAI. The POA time period includes the day of admission, two days before, and the day after admission. The POA DOE will never be earlier than the day of admission. For purposes of NHSN surveillance and determination of the RIT, if the DOE is either of the two days prior to admission, 
then the DOE will be hospital day one. If the DOE is either the day of admission or the day after admission, the event is POA. If the DOE is on or after the third calendar day of admission, then the event is an HAI. The repeat infection time frame is a 14-day period during which no new infections of the same type are reported. The DOE is day one of the 14-day RIT. If a new infection of the same type is identified during the RIT, a new infection is not reported, nor are the following amended. DOE, 14-day RIT, device association, or location of attribution. If additional pathogens are identified within the RIT and found to be associated with the event, the pathogens are added to the event. A new infection of the same type is not reported until the 14-day RIT has elapsed. Returning to the example of the SUDI event, the RIT is hospital day 11 through and including hospital day 24. This is a 14-day time frame where day 1 is the DOE. The RIT is applied at the level of the specific type of infection, with the exception of bloodstream, urinary tract, and pneumonia infections. For these, the RIT is applied at the major type of infection. That is, patients will have no more than one BSI during the BSI RIT, no more than one UTI during the UTI RIT, and no more than one pneumonia during the pneumonia RIT. Let's look at a few examples. When applying the RIT at the level of the specific type of infection, a patient can have no more than one burn infection during a 14-day burn RIT, but may have a decubitus infection identified, which would set a 14-day decu RIT. In contrast, for the three exceptions, BSI, UTI, and pneumonia, when applying the RIT at the major type level, a patient may only have one SUDI or one asymptomatic bacteremic urinary tract infection, a booty, during the 14-day UTI RIT. Remember that all RITs are applied at the specific type level with the exception of BSI, UTI, and pneumonia, in which the RIT is applied at the major type of infection. Let's move on to the next definition, secondary bloodstream infection, BSI attribution period. This is the period in which a positive blood culture must be collected to be considered secondary to a primary site infection. This period includes the IWP combined with the RIT. The secondary BSI attribution period is 14 to 17 days, depending on when the DOE occurs within the IWP. Note that a primary BSI does not have a secondary BSI attribution period. Let's return to the SUDI example. The secondary BSI attribution period includes both the IWP and the RIT. In this example, the secondary BSI attribution period is 15 days. This includes the 14 days of the RIT and one additional day of the IWP. The length of the secondary BSI attribution period depends on the DOE. It is, however, never greater than 17 days. Secondary bloodstream infections may be attributed to a primary site infection as per the secondary BSI guide. Appendix B of the BSI Event Protocol. For purposes of NHSN surveillance, in order for a bloodstream infection to be determined secondary to another site of infection, the following requirements must be met. An organism identified from the site-specific infection is used as an element to meet the site-specific infection criterion, and the blood specimen contains at least one matching organism to that site-specific specimen. The positive blood specimen must be collected during the site-specific infection's secondary BSI attribution period. Or, an organism identified in the blood specimen is an element that's used to meet the NHSN site-specific infection criterion and is collected during the site-specific IWP. Let's return to the SUDI example. 
a blood culture with a collection date on hospital day 18, a day that is included in the secondary BSI attribution period, is positive with a pathogen that matches at least one organism found in the urine culture. Therefore, the final determination is a SUDI with a secondary BSI, pathogen E. coli, and DOE day 11. The final topic is the assignment of pathogens when reporting infections to NHSN. As mentioned earlier, if additional pathogens are identified within an RIT and found to be associated with the event, those pathogens are added and a new infection is not reported. For some infection types, there are pathogen exclusions. For example, Certain organisms will not be available for meeting the infection criteria for UTI and pneumonia definitions. Excluded pathogens from specific infection definitions cannot be assigned as secondary bloodstream infection pathogens for those types of infections. Excluded pathogens must be attributed to either a secondary bloodstream infection for another site-specific infection or a primary BSI. For more information on excluded pathogens, refer to the UTI and pneumonia protocols. Let's look at these two pathogen assignment rules. In this example, a urine culture is collected on day 18, which is within the SUDI RIT. A new pathogen, Enterococcus, is identified. Because the culture was collected within the SUDI RIT and Enterococcus is an eligible pathogen, the Enterococcus is assigned to the originally reported SUDI. Additionally, a blood culture collected during the SUDI secondary BSI attribution period on hospital day 14 was found to be positive with the pathogens E. coli and C. albicans. Because C. albicans is an excluded pathogen for the UTI definition, it cannot be assigned as a secondary bloodstream infection to the SUDI. Instead, other primary sources for the C. albicans bloodstream infection must be considered. If another site-specific infection for which the bloodstream infection can be secondary is not identified, then the BSI will meet criteria for a primary laboratory-confirmed bloodstream infection, LCBI. Note the DOE for the primary BSI hospital day 14 is also the date of the positive blood culture. This is day one of the 14-day RIT for the primary BSI. During this time frame, no new primary BSI will be reported. The final determination represented on this slide is a SUDI with a secondary BSI. Pathogens include E. coli and Enterococcus, and the DOE is Hospital Day 11. Additionally, an LCBI has been identified with pathogen C. albicans, and the DOE is Day 14. Another concept to discuss is the assignment of a pathogen to more than one infection source. A secondary BSI pathogen may be assigned to two different primary site infections, for example, a UTI and an intra-abdominal or IAB infection. Let's look at an example. In this example, a pathogen is assigned as a secondary BSI pathogen to two different primary infection sites, UTI and non-surgical IAB. Two primary site infections have been identified. A blood culture collected on day 17, which is within both the SUDI and the non-surgical IAB secondary BSI attribution period, has a matching pathogen to both primary site infections. Therefore, both primary sites are reported to have a secondary bloodstream infection. The final determination is a SUDI with a secondary BSI, pathogen E. coli, DOE Hospital Day 11, and a non-surgical IAB with a secondary BSI, pathogen E. coli, DOE Hospital Day 9. Similarly, a pathogen may be assigned as a secondary BSI pathogen to a site-specific infection, for example, a UTI, and also as a primary BSI pathogen. Let's look at an example. Again, the SUDI example will be used. In this scenario, the E. coli blood culture collected on hospital day 17 matches a pathogen found in the SUDI. The BSI is determined to be secondary to the SUDI, 
pathogen E. coli, and DOE Hospital Day 11. Note that the blood culture collection on Hospital Day 17 also occurred within the RIT of a primary BSI. The E. coli pathogen will be assigned to the LCBI. This results in the identification of an LCBI with pathogen Staphylococcus aureus, an E. coli, and a DOE hospital day 9. This completes the NHSN Quick Learn series related to definitions and rules for identifying infections. Please send questions or feedback to nhsn at cdc.gov.